In moments, the Duke of Sussex will be hurtling headfirst 60 miles an hour down a winding track of ice in the mountains of Canada. That foot what? down. Okay, so today's video has absolutely everything that I most adore about Prince Harry because I love Prince Harry all of the time. I love him when he's up there on the stage receiving or giving out some award, reading three auto cues at the same time, totally confused and bewildered by the bright light. How many of us feel battered? We, I love all of those things, but I most love Prince Harry when he's out in the wild and attempting to candidly interact with real human beings, sans autocues, right? And uh, that is when you get to see the best version of Prince Harry. So get ready, you're about to see some Rain Man level people skills. <laughs> Daniel Ballin, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? It's all part of his and Duchess Meghan's multi-day tour of the site of Invictus Games Vancouver Whistler 2025. For next year's first ever winter edition, competitors, many of them wounded veterans from up to 25 nations, will participate in about a dozen events, including Skeleton, that head-first luge. I just got a little bit nervous. Now, call me crazy. I don't want to be an alarmist, okay? But I'm getting some very... Uh, fire Festival vibes from this first ever winter edition of the Invictus Games. We are going to be doing one run from here, reaching uh, up to 100 kilometers an hour. I don't know. The only thing is, I know it's in the CBS exclusive access report into the uh, winter edition of the Invictus Games. The only thing they talk about is the skeleton luge. They're obsessed with the skeleton luge. Harry races the reporter on the skeleton luge. They talk about how fast the skeleton luge is. And then you see a few of the would-be competitors sort of sliding around on the slopes, learning how to ski and stuff. But it's, it's really odd. I, I just wonder, is this going to be Prince Harry's uh, partridge amongst the pigeons? Is this going to be... Monkey tennis. Has Harry jumped the shark? Ricardo's first. That's right, Ritardo's first. Them's the rules at Invictus Games. Ricardo's first. Oh! No, of course she didn't say Ritardo's first. She said Ricardo is first, right? But uh, Ricardo does happen to be fully catatonic. He's a vegetable. His wife has power of attorney. She decided that he should be first down the skeleton luge. Nothing to do with the generous life insurance payout, I'm sure. Oh! Are you quite competitive? Um, sometimes. Depends yeah. on what it is. Yeah. Oh! A seal opera. Ah! How did it get so dark so fast? A double? was teaming with killer whales. <laughs> Willie had the larger half with a double bed, a good sized basin covered with mirrored doors, a beautiful window looking down on the courtyard, the fountain, the bronze statue of a roe deer buck. How many of us feel battered? They're not going to stop until she dies. Penis was oscillating to an extremely sensitive and borderline traumatized a seal opera. You want me to put that on my todger? Are you gonna? I, f I feel my competitive juices flying. Good, Good luck. luck. Good luck, mate. Good luck. Then it was Harry's turn. Don't make international news, okay? <laughs> anyway, here we get into a little bit of the interview between the uh, journalist, who I'm sure you've all noticed is going out of his way. He's falling over himself to be nice to Harry. You know, he's, he's really fawning over him, we might say, much like the roe deer buck that Harry so longed for. Mm? Uh, they, <laughs> he's been really nice to him. And for some reason, Harry's just been sort of a little bit bad-tempered and short with him and awkward, and uh, it's just embarrassing to watch. How did you get the news that the king was ill? Um, I spoke to him. <laughs> Harry, you're going to kill him. And what did you do next? I jumped on a plane and, and, and went to go and see him as soon as I could. How was that visit for you emotionally? 
Um, look, I, 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 love, I love my family. The fact, that I was, the fact that I was able to get on a plane and go and see him and spend any time with him, I'm grateful for that. What's sort of your outlook on, on his health? That stays between me and him. To be fair to Harry there, that is a ridiculously stupid question. Obviously, he can't make a big statement one way or the other about his father's health, about the king's cancer diagnosis, can he? He can't just come out and go, oh, he's fucked. <laughs> like, or, uh, oh, he'll be over it in, in a month. It's nothing. Like, he can't actually answer that. But I do just feel with Harry, he, he, he lacks a little bit of uh, uh, interpersonal skills, right? And the... the, the Oh, that stays between me and him, right? You could just say, well, I'd rather not get into that because it's, it's a very personal issue, you know? Sort of, give me a sentence. An illness in the family can have a galvanizing or sort of reunifying effect for a family. Absolutely. Is that possible in this case? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you know, throughout all these families, I see it on a day-to-day on a -day basis. So anyway, the interview went on like this. Lots of awkward, unanswerable questions and Harry struggling to get through them. Uh, you know, like a footballer in the mix zone after a match, just trying to say anything to get out of there as fast as possible. Um, you know, the, again, the, the strength of the, of the family unit coming together. Just physically being in California, how have you processed the fact that there's so much happening back uh, with your family where you come from? I have my own family, right. so, as we all do, yeah. right? So, um, you know, my family and my life in California is, is, is as it is. You know, I will, I've got you know, other trips planned um, that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll stop in and, and see my family as much as I can. That's my next question about your family. How's Harry the dad? How's what? How How's the Harry dad? the dad? I can't tell you, that's classified. Okay, you it's know, super you know, top right? secret? It's top secret. Really? Uh, how are you enjoying your time living in the US? It's amazing. I love every single day. Do you feel American? Uh, Would you I, think about becoming a citizen? It's, I, have, I have considered it, yeah. Yeah? yeah. What, would, what would stop you from doing it? I have no idea. I, it's, I'm, I'm here standing next to this with these guys. He's here standing next to this with these guys. That's why he isn't going to become an American citizen. Aside from Invictus, what else are you, what's keeping you busy when you're out of the house? <laughs> oh, the agony this journalist must be going through. I, this reminds me of uh, back in the day when I'd have done an early morning English conversation class and uh, I didn't know anything about the student. I hadn't prepared any topics and uh, they're giving me nothing. Right, why do you sign up for English conversation classes if you can't hold one, okay? Uh, why do you sell them, Danny, if you can't do them? <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, this is the thing, right? You expect something, okay? But uh, he's running out now of ammo. Uh, this is Prince Harry, he's English, uh, he does Invictus. What else do you do? Everything. Yeah? Everything in the house, everything outside the house. Um, so, no, the, the, the mission continues and every, every element of the work continues. And then before you know it, February next year, this time in a year's time, we're going to be right here doing all this again. Hopefully you'll be here. Um, and we're going to have the whole of uh, Whistler and hopefully the whole of Canada screaming these guys on for, for an epic games. Everything is keeping him busy. Everything inside the house, everything outside the house. <laughs> the mission continues. <laughs> yeah, the whole of Canada is going to be screaming them on this time ne next year. <laughs> What a fascinating yeah. conversation, Will. While the cameras here are focused on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, make no mistake, they're not the ones taking center stage. Oh, there goes Ricardo, first to volunteer again. <laughs> These guys are the stars of the show. And as they step on the mountain in Whistler, Canada to meet staff, instructors, and future competitors for the 2025 Invictus Games. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. There's a noticeable glint in Harry's eye. Ah, yes, that unmistakable characteristic glint in Harry's eyes. <laughs> to have the games every every other year, but then also be able to do a one year to go event as well, is literally my, my annual fix to be in amongst this community and have a laugh, have fun, no matter which nation they're from, the, the banter's the same. I bet it's not. I get a lot of energy just from being around these guys. He gets a lot of energy from them. Oh, maybe he's like the worst Bond villain ever. I get a lot of energy from them. <laughs> he's turning them all into batteries. I get a lot of energy just from being around these guys. Harry. 
A year from now, more than 500 wounded service members from all over the globe will be in Whistler and Vancouver, competing in events including alpine skiing and the high-speed skeleton. You wouldn't believe the number of people that have signed up to throw themselves headfirst on a tray down an ice luge. Well, yeah, I mean, to be fair, the skeleton. <laughs> I'm not good. I, all right, you're going to think this is harsh, but skeleton, the skeleton, the high-speed skeleton, that's the one sport. I mean, the name itself suggests a corpse could do it, couldn't it? No. Harry even trying adaptive sit skiing. This is Peacemaker. Hi, Peacemaker. Oh, God, that was the most patronizing. Hi, Peacemaker, I've ever heard in my life. Hi, Peacemaker. We met competitors like Peacemaker from Nigeria, who used this preview as a chance to get used to the slopes. Peacemaker, what time did you get here today? Oh, God, the kneeling. I don't even know if that's what you're supposed to do. Are you supposed to get down to their eye level? You'll never see me interacting with anyone, but uh, especially not people in need. Okay, because I don't know the protocol. Am I humiliating them by kneeling on the floor and going, Hi, peacemaker. Is that, is that what you're supposed to do? Yeah, it was like nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Right here. And it's now it's half past three. The lifts are closed, man. We gotta... <laughs> are you excited to have Team Nigeria up here? Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> How am I not laughing at his name yet? Peacemaker. Poor peacemaker as well. He had to travel alone this year because his hell-raising twin... Troublemakers no longer welcome at the Invictus Games. Real bad man. What does it mean to you to be able to teach these guys skiing, adaptive skiing for the first time? <laughs> what does it mean to you to be able to teach these guys skiing, adaptive skiing for the first time? I actually, I feel bad at this point, even pointing it out, but uh, Harry cannot get through a sentence without reading an auto cue. It's, it's insane. It, uh, and there must be people like holding cue cards all around the fucking camera. Uh, what, what does it mean to, to you to the skiing, teach the adaptive skiing for the first time? It's yeah. proving to people that, that, that this is possible no matter what your disability is. <laughs> There is no activity on earth that is possible for all people no matter what disability they have. Except maybe the skeleton luge. Skiing, definitely not, right? Uh, imagine, uh, let's just think, blindness. If you're blind, you can't ski. Oh, I bet there is some blind person who skis with the dog or something. I don't know, right? Uh, there's got to be something. Think of a, something that, you know, being severely autistic. <laughs> I'm sorry to go after the autists all the time. It's, I'm allowed to because I'm, it's quite close to home. Autism. I'm not going to elaborate on that. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll just let you think stuff, you know. But um, yeah, uh, it would though, wouldn't it? Being severely autistic, trying to ski, uh, everything that set them off, wouldn't it? The tight salopettes. <laughs> they'd be going to an autist rage, and uh, you know what they're like, don't you? They're all the same. <laughs> Come to think of it, Matt, might be the one disability where the uh, skeleton luge would be a problem. <laughs> Try and send them down that if they don't feel like it. <laughs> anyway, that's enough collectives insulted for one video, don't you think? Uh, give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. Unless you've taken it all a bit too seriously, then you should go away and have a little think is my advice. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and oh, by the way, if you want to check out the crazy new videos I'm doing on Patreon, then you can uh, click on the link in the description and uh, help the channel out that way as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Not too sure that was a clever move.